Hello, this is Danielle M. Villegas. Welcome to my presentation for the course PTC 650 Web-Based Training Design. This presentation is for a, a project that was done for this course uh, to do a creation of a course by creating storyboards for a course. The objective was not to actually produce the course where you would see all the, the finer details and the functionality, but just to present the storyboards. The background or the inspiration for this project is that I'm a mom to a high-functioning autistic child and it was recommended to me that I should look into video modeling as a possible means of providing social skills therapy for my son. Video modeling is a very well documented uh, method uh, that's as effective as a means of providing examples to high-functioning autistic children. Uh, you can even see in this Google search there's uh, over 51,000 examples of this being documented so it definitely seemed like something that was worth pursuing. I saw this as a great opportunity. First of all, video modeling is uh, an ideal situation for children, especially autistic children, as they're naturally attracted to audiovisual stimulations, being that most of them are visual learners. Uh, they love video games, they love watching TV, they like watching uh, movies, things like that. Video modeling also provides uh, families an opportunity to ha have easy access to courses and software that can supplement any instruction that the child might be learning with their therapist. By allowing access at home, parents or caretakers uh, can certainly help uh, get an idea of what to work on with their children to enforce the concepts that they're learning in therapy, and as a result, learn better social skills. Social skills is, are something that autistic and even ADHD children can't absorb uh, by instinct like most of the rest of us. It's something that they actually have to be taught in the same way that you learn math or history or science. And by having these, um, by having video modeling, it's something that parents can certainly look over the information with their child and they can reinforce the ideas that are covered in therapy sessions. Problem is, and this is where the stumbling block for, mo for video modeling is, uh, standalone software that's out there can be fairly expensive and has special viewers or there's DVD sets that can be very pricey and not all parents even know where to begin to find this kind of software so the idea behind this was that they would pro uh, this program would provide parents with an affordable option where they can access video modeling programs for their children uh, at any time so it could be done through a web browser on any computer connected to the internet and it wouldn't require any special plugins other than very common ones that you can get for free where you could access YouTube, Flash, ActiveX, things like that that are available. Uh, there is other computer-based software out there on the market that address everyday social skills issues, but the courses that I wanted to try to concentrate on were things that were not everyday occurrences, but not infrequent or rare instances, such as celebratory events like a birthday party, uh, a holiday party, things like that. So, my audience. I had to think of who that had to be. Obviously, the audience had to be children who have autism or ADHD who have social skills to deficits and need to learn more. The other part of the audience is the caretakers or parents of these children because they can watch and study these with their autistic child and get help in how to help their child learn and strategize in these situations. What seems very automatic for you is not automatic for them. So it kind of puts you, the, the caretaker, in a different mental place to understand where the details lie. Now it's assumed that the children who are looking at this are kids who've probably attended many celebratory celebrations but they still somehow run into problems. So they'll recognize the situations, but they might not be able to handle them. This was something that uh, I took a small survey when I created this uh, among basing my own experiences with those of uh, other parents that I knew who had children who were on the spectrum. And we kind of had a certain set of common goals that we found that were always a problem whenever their kids attended a, a party or some big celebration or event that certain things always cropped up and this is how our kids would react and what did we have to do to kind of inter help them intervene or, or act on their own behalf. So the objective of the course, uh, there was two main ones. 
The first would be that the learner would be able to identify the common agitators that would cause a meltdown, withdrawal, or other negative behavior at the event. The other objective or goal was uh, that the learner would learn how to develop strategies to either self-advocate in agitation situations or seek help in these situations where the outcome is socially acceptable. That's the, the, the main, that's the big part of it. So I had to figure out the best way of doing that. So I created a flow chart to figure out how I wanted this course to work. You'll see here that, you know, we identify what the problem is. Uh, or that there is a situation, there's a problem, and it would show a video. There would be a point where they would say, okay, what is bothering me? They have choices. They have to figure out what it is. Once they figure out what exactly the problem is, they come up with a, you know, the next point. Okay, I've got a problem. How do I fix it? It provides different situations where it gives you different choices. And the idea is that the child can choose on any of these choices. Uh, it would provide a video where they could actually see, okay, this is what, uh, you know, I could be doing. For example, the very first one here, run around screaming and crying. There would be a, pic, uh, a video of a child screaming and crying. And they could see almost what their own actions would be. And they could see objectively, no, that's not quite right. Sometimes they know that it's not right theoretically, but they don't necessarily see it in themselves. So by seeing a video, that's that's where the modeling part comes in. So they can see, you know, make a choice. Is that the right one? There's more than one right answer. Once they figure out what the correct answer is, they come down to here to the bottom. They'll say, yes, you did a great job. They'll get, a you know, some sort of verbal praise. Once they figured out all the correct answers, they get something uh, like a big hooray at the at the very end. Uh, to let them know that they've they understand the concepts that are there. So, without further ado, the storyboards boards that I came up with was, or the object of this particular module was dealing with those noisy songs. Noise is a really big thing for ADHD and autistic kids. They tend to, uh, although they can hear perfectly fine. They, many of them have sensory integration issues, which means that they can either hear things a little bit more, like their ears are more sensitive than the average person. So the situation this is that you're at a Christmas party and there's lots of music and dancing and singing. And again, anytime you see a graphic, more than likely it would be like a little mini film. So you have a dad and your kid dancing, having a good time, but you identify that something's bothering you. And again, this would be all kind of verbally there would be an audio file to kind of lead the child through as well as the visual pictures you got to have both so you would say what is the problem click on what you think is the problem here that is bothering you with all the loud music well you have three pictures again these would be videos not still images but the idea is that they could click on any of these in any order and and kind of try to identify what the problem might be so let's say that i'm the, the learner and i say oh i think this might be it they would get a response, no, not hungry. You just ate all that candy. So that's not the problem. So maybe maybe this is the answer. No, you're not sleepy. Who could sleep with all that noise? So that's not the answer. So at the end, you see the, the little child holding their ears. Yes, that's it. It's the noise. It's hurting your ears. Again, very common response. So how do you solve this problem? So again then you provide the choices again these would be mini videos that would show the the actual behavior of those choices now some are good choices some are not so good choices so the child would get a chance to look at each of these as a video and see you know and, and approach and each one individually see if that kind of works and then there would probably be like a check mark or something like that to say yes that one works or no that one doesn't work so they would have examples so the first one might be scream and yell and behave like a crazy person and say nasty things to people very common response for a kid who's autistic is is that they just would react ne negatively so if they answer that they would the the program would come back and say no i don't think that's a good idea let's try the next idea so it gives them a chance to try again. Go hide in a corner or under a chair and cry. No, I don't think that's a good idea. I know it's what you feel like doing, but you're a big kid. You can do something more appropriate. Next choice. Those were two negative choices. The next choices are positive ones. And again, not 
none of them are like this is what you must do their choices go get a grown-up to help yes that's a great idea find someone you trust like mom or dad to help you figure out what you to do if you can't figure it out yourself it's always something that a kid at any age can do politely tell the person playing the music to please turn down the music because it hurts your ears you're trying to get the child to self-advocate at some point Yes, that's a good idea. As long as you're polite and remember to say, please turn down the music, the person will understand and turn the music down. Remember to say thank you when they do. You want to, again, reinforce other social skills as you're, as, as such as good matters. Another choice is find a quiet room nearby and play or read a book. This is something that we found to be very effective for my child. And, and this was something that a lot of other parents that I talked to said this is usually effective. They kind of need to step away for a little bit, regroup, and then come back. So, excellent idea. You found a quiet space to take a break and you're ready. Uh, you can be playing or reading nicely until the music stops. You can join the party later when you're ready. Good thinking. So there's some positive reinforcement for what they're doing. So once they've completed that and they've answered all the right question answers and they know what's the right way to approach it and the wrong way to approach it, they get a, a big ta-da! Wow, you did it. You solved the problem and you can join the party now. You are smart party addable. So they get a positive reinforcement for having the analytical skills to kind of A, identify what the problem was, B, figure out what their choices were, and C, being able to employ that. So that's an idea of how to employ uh, a video, um, a web-based training model for something that is maybe not often thought of uh, for a typical child, but more for a special needs child. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation and I thank you for your attention. This is Danielle Villegas signing off.